Off the coast of northern Florida, a team of researchers from Duke and Syracuse universities works to attach a tracking device to a North Atlantic right whale. As you approach, your sort of nerves take over. There's certainly an adrenaline rush that starts in it, and your, your heart starts pumping. You look down at this massive animal, you know, it's 45 tons of, you know, a lot of blubber, yes, but a lot of muscle too. With an estimated population of less than 500 animals, North Atlantic right whales are among the most endangered of all marine mammals. While the whaling that nearly destroyed the species is long gone, threats to their survival remain. Vessel strikes and an entanglement in fishing gear has become um, quite a serious problem in the last few years. Each year, the whales migrate along the East Coast from their summer feeding grounds off New England to waters off Georgia and Florida. It's here, in their southern range, that researchers watch carefully for the arrival of new calves, and with them, the species hope for recovery. The North Atlantic right whale is a critically endangered species, and we have a responsibility to reach a balance between effective and realistic training for our sailors with good environmental stewardship. That stewardship starts with knowing the location of whales in real time, so ships can maintain a safe distance. To locate whales in waters off Georgia and Florida during the calving season, the U.S. Navy helps fund daily aerial surveys. The purpose is to protect right whales by locating them and then getting the sighting information out to the local agencies, ports, and mariners. Over the past two decades, the aerial surveys have also given researchers an insight into the species' long-term trends. Things like reproductive success, mortality, habitat distribution, the whale's preference for habitat use, and that allows us to actually translate that to what risk there is for right whales for various human-related activities. On average, over the last decade, we've had 21 calves born per season, and 21 is not a lot of animals to be adding to the population. Observation for North Atlantic right whales isn't limited to aerial surveys. Land-based volunteers, Navy lookouts, and personnel from other federal and state agencies form a network known as the Early Warning System. To organize communications of whale sightings, the Navy created the Fusion Center near Jacksonville, Florida. Here, each sighting is entered into a database and disseminated out to Navy ships, submarines, and aircraft. Oh, Stu, we have another report of a whale sighting. Roger. Once we receive information of a, of, of a whale sighting, and once this information is sounded, it goes straight out to the ships. The information is also provided to the U.S. Coast Guard and Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission for communication with commercial vessels, civilian mariners, and the Early Warning System Network. All okay. car, this is Fast Fast Jacksonville, Northern White Whale Sighting. Keep a five nautical mile radius of position, three, one. One, five, decimal four north, zero, eight, one, one zero decimal six west. One adult, one to calf, heading east. Oh, Roger, plotting BMS. Progress on the watch, please plot marine mammal sighting. Uh. The Navy's primary mission is to defend our country with combat-ready naval forces, and that means realistic training at sea is essential. Uh, we need to make sure that our ship and my crew is fully trained and ready at all times to execute all tasking and all missions. And we can only achieve that successfully at sea. But during calving season, naval units conducting at-sea training activities are tasked with a second mission, to implement mitigation measures for right whale protection. Before transiting the calving habitat, Navy ships initiate communication with the Fusion Center to obtain early warning system data, and then implement speed reductions when nearby any recently reported sightings. The Navy also prohibits units from using explosives conducting gunnery training, and using a majority of sonar sources in the calving habitat. It's just something that we do, and we've made part of our training plan, part of our culture, and it's something that all of the officers uh, train on and all of the crews train on throughout the Atlantic fleet. 
These mitigation measures are guided by the Navy's Marine Mammal Protection Act permits and Endangered Species Act consultations. Compliance with these acts is maintained in part by the Navy's Marine Species Monitoring Program. What we get from the monitoring program is really everything from basic occurrence information about their abundance and what habitats they use to more um, specific things about how individual animals dive and behave, where they are on our ranges and how they may interact or potentially be affected by our training activities. Understanding whale behavior is one of the goals of the Navy-funded Right Whale Tracking Project. This particular set of experiments is to see how the whales are using the shoreline, how far offshore they're going, um, where they move in sort of a 24-hour period. To track a whale, researchers attach a digital acoustic recording tag to its back. The tag is secured with suction cups and remains in place for up to 24 hours. The tag continuously collects data on the whale's orientation, depth as it dives, and GPS location. The data come back, we can actually look at what the whale was doing underwater the whole time it was, we had the tag on. The tag also continuously records sound, providing insight into the whale's vocal activities and social behaviors. Okay, uh, right, we've got those coordinates and uh, we'll proceed to, the, uh, to that location. Thank you. It's intense, it's a really intense experience, but it's a fantastic one, there's nothing like it. Every time we put something out, we learn something new. There's no doubt about it. And that helps us uh, better plan and evaluate our training activities uh, to, to really share that habitat with them and to, to try to minimize our impacts uh, as much as possible on the animals. With such a small population of whales and their relatively low birth rate, the North Atlantic right whale's future is far from secure. But it looks like the, the population is slowly increasing. It's very slow. Uh, which is not surprising given the long lifespan and the slow reproductive status of, of an animal like this. The Navy is committed to continued mitigation efforts and to working with partner federal and state agencies and private organizations to raise understanding and awareness of this critically endangered species. When I go places now, people know about right whales and they're interested in learning more. And that's kind of the most exciting thing to me about this job. Those of us that serve in the Navy, care very deeply about the health of the ocean and the health of the animals that swim and live in the ocean. And we are very conscious of our responsibility, both as a Navy and just as members of, of the international community, to maintain the health of the oceans. The Navy is committed to being a good steward of the sea while maintaining military readiness. Navy scientists and environmental planners support the Navy's mission and environmental commitments by preparing environmental planning documents, managing a comprehensive marine species monitoring program, and designing and executing numerous other environmental stewardship projects sponsored by the United States Fleet Forces Command.